Hello guys and welcome to this Spigot development tutorial. This is the first Spigot development tutorial with my uh, voice on this channel. So please let me know if you want to see more Spigot tutorials by commenting. In this tutorial we are going to make a slash manage command. We have to pass in a player name. Since I am the only one online currently on this server, I am just going to pass in my own name. This will open a GUI. We have a player head with the target's name, so the player name we have given. And we have some options right here. We can heal the target, we can kill the target, and we can spawn a zombie at the location of the target. So we can click on heal, the target is healed. You cannot see it because I am in creative mode right now. Uh, we can also kill the target, like this. And we can spawn a zombie, like this. So this is a very simple GUI system we are going to make in this tutorial. Please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, please let me know by commenting if you want to see more Spigot tutorial videos on this channel. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, let's create our new project for this plugin. Make sure you have the Minecraft development plugin installed on IntelliJ so we can easily create a new plugin. Uh, project. I'm gonna name this project just Tutorial GUI. You can select the location on your PC where you want to store this project. Select plugin, select bucket. You can either select paper or spigot. There's not a really big difference between these two, but I am just going to select spigot. And I am uh, going to select 1.19.4. Uh, you can just select the latest version if you want to, but I am going with 1.19.4 because I have a, a server which is on this version. The plugin name, I'll leave it like this and the main class as well, I'll leave it like this. Okay, I am using Maven. You can also select Gradle if you want to, but that doesn't really matter which one you are using. I'm going to stick with Maven. Okay, let's open all of this up. Okay, we want to make a command, so let's start by creating a new package called commands. Inside of this package we make a new Java class called manage command. Okay, we need to implement command executor, so that Spigot knows this is a uh, command. We need to implement this method. Okay, I'm going to rename this to sender, uh, this to command, that's fine and this to arcs. This is a personal preference, but you can leave it as it is, but I'm just gonna do it like this. In my opinion, this looks much better. Okay, we need, we first of all need to check whether the sender is a player or not, because if the sender isn't a player, we cannot run this command. So if the sender instance of player, so if it's not a player, we wanna return true. We can uh, send the sender a message, sender.send message, chat color that red. Only players can execute this command. Okay, so this is the first check we have to do. Okay, the second check we need to do is check if the arcs, uh, the length of the arcs is one because the command we want to make is slash manage and then we want to give a player as an argument. So the length of the argument is one because we have one argument right here. So what we can do is we can check if args that length is not one, then we want to return true because the player hasn't specified the command like this. Uh, we can also create a player up here, player and then sender, because we have checked the, that the player is a sender, so we can create a player li uh, like this, and we can send the player a message uh, telling the player that he needs to use slash manage, and then player, like this. Okay, the next thing we need to do is check if the given player, so this argument, is an actual player that is currently online on the server. And we can do that by if bucket.getPlayer, this will return a player which is online on the server, 
and we need to pass in a name or a UUID. But we are going to use the name because you want to type slash message and then the player name. But we need to pass in this argument that the player has given and that is arcs zero. Because the length of arcs here is one, but this argument is arcs zero. If you give another argument, then this is argument one. So it starts by zero and then one, then two, then three, like that. Okay, so this is arcs zero. And we can check uh, if bucket.cat player arcs zero is null. That means that the player is not online. So we can send the uh, player a message chat color dot red and we can say player not found and we also have to return true telling true means that it will stop run the code and it means that the command is successfully executed all right now we know that the uh, given player so this player is actually online so what we can do is create a new player called target and that is the bucket.cat player arcs zero like this we can actually uh, copy this and put this above here and we can just remove this and do target like this the last thing we need to do in this command is open the gui but we're gonna make a separate class for that gui so let's um, first of all make a package called GUIs, or um, I usually call it menus. And then I am going to create a new class and I'm gonna call this manage menu. Okay, what we wanna do is make a constructor. So public manage menu like this. And what we want to do is we want to give it a player player. This is the player uh, who will open the menu and we need to give a player the target that is the player that we are going to manage so what we can do now here in this command we can call new manage menu and we give it the player and we give the target like this and we can return true okay let's go inside of this manage menu and we want to make a new inventory so inventory inventory equals bucket dot create inventory. We need to pass in the player holder, which is the owner of the inventory. I usually uh, pass in null because this is actually not really necessary to put in. You can uh, put in the player if you want to, but I will just leave it as null. We can give the inventory a size. I'm going with 27 which is uh, three rows of nine so 27 slots you can go with 9 18 27 36 45 and 54 these are the options you can give so this is like uh, one row of slots this is two rows of slots three rows four rows i think uh, 27 is like a normal chest and uh, 45 is like a big chest a double chest I'm just going with 27 and then we can give this inventory a title and you can also just use chat colors if you want to manage player okay the next thing we need to do is add items to that inventory so we can create for each item a new item stack first of all I'm gonna make a target head we're gonna set this to a new item stack we need to give the material which is a player head and the amount is one so this will need create a new item and we can add that to the inventory so inventory dot set item or you can do add item add item and then target head this will just uh, set this item to the next available slot in the inventory but you can also use set item and you can give it an slot number which is an integer and then the target head Okay, I want to put this target head in slot 22 and then target head, okay. Before we do this, before we set this target head in the inventory, we want to give this target head, uh, this player head actually, we want to give this player head a display name and maybe some lore or some other things. And we can do that by using the item meta. Let's call this target head meta. 
is target head dot get item meta so we can call this target head meta and then we can do set display name this will set a new display name for this item and we want to set this display name to the target dot get name like this and the target is the player that we will manage and we do that because we want to check if you click on this inventory and we want to for example heal this target player we can check by going to the player head and then going to the display name and see which player we want to heal so that is very useful so let's uh, just give the display name the target.get name and after you have set all the uh, item meta things you can also set a lore if you want to you can add enchants you can do many things but after you have done all of that things we do target head that set item meta target head meta like this and now we set the item in the inventory okay i'm going to create a new item which is the heal this is the item for our uh, heal option so we can heal the target material dot and then red die just like this item meta heal meta is heal dot get item meta okay and then you can say heal and we can say um, set lore and the set lore needs a list of strings so what we can do is we can call arrays.as list then we can just put in a string this will make it as a uh, new array list actually uh, so we can say um, chat color dot white heal the target like this and then we can say uh, heal dot set item meta heal meta And then we can set this item into the inventory. I want to set this heal item in slot 11 and then heal. Let's make another item for the kill option. I want to put this kill item in slot 13 kill like this and then the last item is the zombie item and we can say zombie head spawn a zombie at the location of the target okay and then we do zombie dot set item meta zombie meta inventory that set item i am going to do 15 and then zombie okay this is uh, a lot of work actually we have created four items we have added those items in the inventory and the last thing we need to do is player dot open inventory and then the inventory like this this will open this inventory we have created and which contains all of these items of course okay so this will work perfectly fine so we have uh, finished the command the manage command and the manage menu let's first register the command otherwise it won't work and we can do that by going in the on enable get command and then manage the set executor manage command like this and we also and we also need to put this command in the plugin.yml we need to add commands and then manage we can give this command a description manage a player and we can also give it a usage slash manage and then player like this for example and we can also add a permission to this command 
So let's do manage.player for example. Make sure you don't use capital letters and don't uh, use spaces like this. Just put a dot like this, okay? Just manage player. And we can also give a permission message. This message will be sent to a player if that player is using this command but doesn't have this permission. So we can say um, you don't have permission to use this command. So like this. Okay, the next thing we need to do is make a listener. So we're gonna create a new package called listeners. And uh, we can do, for example, menu listener. We're gonna implement listener from org.bucket.event. Add event handler and then public void on inventory click. And then we are going to use the inventory click event. So all of the code inside this method will run if someone is clicking on an inventory. So remember, all of the code inside of this method will run for every inventory you click. So the first thing we need to do is check if the inventory that we are clicking on is the actual manage menu, this one, this inventory right here. And we can check that by its title. So we can do if event that get view that get title equals and then we go to the manage menu and then we copy this and paste it in here. And now we know that we have clicked this menu and now we can run the code for that menu inside of this. What we can actually do is just put this little symbol in front of it and then return. This is a better practice in my opinion so it will if the uh, inventory is not the managed player inventory it will return uh, which means it will stop running the code that we put in here after this if statement so that that is actually the same so now we know that the clicked inventory is the managed player inventory okay the first thing we want to do is event dot set cancelled and we want to set that to true if this is set to true the player is not able to uh, pick up the items in the inventory so that is very useful because if you have this on false and by default this is false so if this is set to false the player can put items in the inventory and also get the items out of the inventory so we want to set this to true and we also want to check if event.getCurrentItem is null then we also want to return because the current item is the item we have clicked on and if that item is null we don't want to run the code so we're just gonna return like this let's just make the player now player player is event dot get player you might think it is get player but on this event it is get who clicked event dot get who clicked and this will return a human entity so we need to cast this to player like this this is this is very weird i don't know why this is but spigot made it like this i don't know why and let's also get the target and this is uh, very complex because inside of the inventory right here we have created an item called the target head and we have set that item uh, the display name we have set that display name for that item to the target that get name and we have set this item to the slot 22 so what we want to do is bucket dot get player and then event that get view this is the uh, inventory actually then dot get uh, item and then slot 22 because this is the slot where the target head is then we want to do that get item meta and then that get display name and this will return the target dot get name because we have set the display name to the target dot get name here so now we have successfully created that target but the target can also be nil because if i open the inventory and the target is quitting the server while I still have the inventory opened, then the target is null. So we have to check if target is null. We want to return. And before that, we can do player.close inventory and player.send message jetcaller.red. Uh, the target 
is not online anymore like this okay what we now can do is check uh, on which item we have clicked on because if we have clicked on the red die we want to heal the target if we uh, click on the iron sword we want, we want to kill the target and if you click on the zombie head we want to spawn a zombie at the target's location so we can check that by if event.currentItem dot get type is material dot red die then we want to heal the target so we can do target dot set health and then 20 20 is the max he can get and then we can say uh, player that close inventory and player that send message green the target is healed like this okay and then we can add a else if event dot get earn current item dot get type is material dot iron sword then we want to get the target and then just set the health to zero this will kill the target and then we can uh, copy this and say the target is killed else and then add another else if event.getCurrentItem.getType is material.zombiehead then we want to spawn a zombie at the target's location so we can do target.getWorld.spawn entity at the target location, so target.getLocation and then entity type dot zombie like this. And then we can copy this. Um, we can also just put this one here and remove all of this. And we say um, zombie spawned at the location of the target like this okay nice i think that's it we can test it before we test it we need to uh, register this listener and we do that in the on enable get server dot get plugin manager dot register events new menu listener and then this we need to pass in the plugin which is the class that extends java plugin and that is this one okay and now we can test it uh, we can just click here on run on this button right here then it will say build success we can close this window and then we have our plugin here in the inside of the target folder we can copy this and we can paste it in here inside our plugins folder of our server and now we can start our server I can join the server by uh, the server address localhost. Okay, let's test our command uh, slash manage. If I do slash manage, it will say slash uh, use slash manage and then a player. Since I am the only one online at this server, I can just pass in my own name like this. It will uh, open the GUI. We have the player head uh, with the target's name. We have the heal option, the kill option and the zombie spawn option let's do the heal target is healed uh, let's do the kill i am killed and uh, let's use the spawn a zombie like this so everything works if you have any questions or problems please let that know by commenting on this video i uh, like to help people so and if you like this tutorial please consider liking subscribe it's completely free and let me know if you want to see more spigot tutorials on this channel goodbye